Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar for Klepados Nafta. On behalf of Nasdaq Vilnius, I am pleased to introduce today's host, CEO of Klepados Nafta, Mr. Mendogas Yusus. First of all, Mr. Yusus is going to comment on Klepados Nafta performance and unaudited financial results for the first half of 2018, which were just published and then we will be answering questions after the presentation. So please feel free to send your questions using the questions box on your webinar control panel. Mr. Yusus, I would like to invite you to start with the presentation. Hello, good morning uh, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to present uh, our first uh, half uh, uh, of the year results and uh, talking about the content of today's presentation I will uh, uh, cover a few uh, sentences regards our company highlights from the first uh, half of the year and uh, most of the focus on financial results and investment overview um, so just to remind a little bit uh, we are the operator of oil and LNG terminals and uh, recently we have updated our values in general uh, the strategy update process is going on and we are expecting to have updated company strategy by the end of the year and you can see that uh, new values uh, which are respect uh, uh, progress, professionalism and cooperation represents uh, our uh, high ambition than we are uh, currently describing in uh, our strategic documentation. Nevertheless, uh, today we are focused on uh, operations of uh, four terminals in Lithuania. Uh, two of them are oil terminals. Uh, one is in Klaipeda and another in Subuchus. Uh, Klaipeda's terminal is mainly for transshipments and Subachus for storage and two LNG terminals. One is large-scale terminal, uh, FSRU based uh, and another one small-scale terminal, the first one in, in the Baltic uh, countries. Uh, talking about the highlights of uh, second uh, quarter, uh, there are many things uh, around the corporate governance and important uh, items were taken uh, in terms of appointing uh, the supervisory council members that were elected in April and they are Eimantas Kudulas, uh, Andrus Varanavichus and Thomas Lukashavichus. I would like to point that uh, two out of three council members, they are uh, independent uh, members and one is representing uh, the major shareholder uh, the Ministry of Economy uh, and the chairmen of both boards the management board and, uh, and the council were as well elected uh, respectively Eamon Toskudel as the chairman of the supervisory board and Giedrus de Savage as uh, the chairman of the board it is important uh, to highlight that uh, in both government governance bodies we have a dominance of independent members and we are moving further uh, from uh, reducing uh, political impact uh, of the company and focus more on business activities. Uh, as well, important change in top management, uh, we have new CFO after uh, previous CFO Marius uh, Pulkaunink has uh, made a career and moved to one of the largest uh, state-owned enterprises uh, uh, dealing with uh, wood production. Uh, new CFO Jonas Lengsches was selected uh, through the open um, selection process and appointed in June. Uh, we also had uh, accepted uh, the 15th LNG cargo to our large-scale terminal uh, during May and it shows uh, that the terminal is pretty intensively employed in our country and compared to other European terminals uh, 
the utilization rate is two or three times higher. I uh, would like also to focus on uh, several other uh, soft items. And first is employees. Uh, the company has been um, uh, elected uh, or awarded uh, as the most attractive employer of logistics and transport uh, sector in Lithuania. We are very proud of that. And we also have several other important uh, programs uh, started in our company with aim to improve our efficiency and as well improve uh, our operational excellence. One of such programs involving uh, quite a lot of employees is KN Digital. And we also contribute to different uh, charity activities happening around us. And uh, regards the communities, we also uh, we we feel, we feel that uh, uh, communities become more demanding toward their environment, and uh, our oil terminal is based in the city center, so we have uh, also a lot of investments around uh, environmental issues, with the main idea to improve uh, the situation for for local communities and uh, the, the plan is to invest uh, around four and a half uh, million euros in coming uh, two three years with uh, reducing uh, reducing the amount of um, uh, of, of chemical uh, of, of gas uh, ca carbons uh, exiting uh, from our production process. Uh, moving back to financial results, uh, we have uh, had a strong um, first half of the year and net profit uh, reached uh, 10 million euros and that's 38% uh, uh, bigger amount of net profit compared with the uh, first half of 2017 and revenues they stayed uh, almost at the same level slightly increased uh, but uh, the main profit comes uh, since we managed to to do our transactions with better operational efficiency and EBITDA amounted to 17.2 million euros in first half of 2018. Uh, if to look at uh, uh, results uh, quarter by quarter then uh, the second quarter was not as strong as the first one uh, which was uh, close to our record results uh, nevertheless uh, uh, we evaluate the first half of the year as uh, delivering uh, really strong financial results if to look into more details of the structure of sales revenues and EBITDA, then uh, in general we see that uh, still majority of profit uh, was generated by oil terminal uh, and uh, that is still our key driver of uh, profitability. LNG terminal uh, activities um, also delivered quite a stable results, although this uh, activity is regulated um, and we receive uh, revenues and return on our capital investment uh, fixed, uh, which is not depending on, on the volumes of, of the terminal. Subacho storage uh, results are also at a very comparable level. We saw a slight increase in demand of storage services during the uh, first half of 2018, but uh, it had a pretty minor impact on uh, total revenues from the company's point of view. And uh, by the profit uh, is uh, clearly higher in 2018 from oil transshipments. One of the main uh, explanations is that uh, our transshipment uh, volumes increased uh, by almost 10 percent 
and the volumes increased in the transit uh, sector that is uh, delivering us uh, better profitability compared to export activities and uh, that was driven mainly by uh, increased activities by Belarusian companies and which managed to solve uh, geopolitical issues uh, with Russia and improved uh, their production during um, uh, this year. And uh, storage, as I mentioned, uh, demand uh, increased by uh, half percent uh, points. Uh, and the total turnover of uh, storage capacity was uh, 188,000 uh, tons. Uh, the main customer for the storage terminal is still state uh, reserves. Uh, regasification, uh, uh, reloading uh, from large-scale LNG terminal uh, were, was uh, by 6%, 6.5% uh, 6 uh, lower uh, during this year. We had uh, accepted and reloaded five LNG carriers. That's uh, by one less uh, than during the same period in 2017. And we feel some impact of uh, uh, increased LNG, global LNG prices in 2018, which was driven by increased demand in China. And uh, we nevertheless uh, still, the volumes are um, uh, pretty comparable with uh, the last year and if to look at the total Lithuanian market then uh, this uh, volume is around 40-45% uh, of total market demand that uh, was delivered through Kleipadas uh, FSRU terminal to our gas market. LNG reloading station uh, which started operations uh, in 2017 and end of uh, October. Uh, we focused on uh, developing uh, business activities with uh, LNG reloading station and 7,000 cubic meters were reloaded uh, to LNG trucks, which means almost 200 uh, trucks um, uh, visited our site and delivered LNG to four countries which are Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland. We do have uh, two terminal users. Those are Litgas and Estigas. But uh, later, uh, this number of customers who come to pick LNG with trucks is, uh, and buy from those two customers is um, higher than, than only these two. So, the LNG reloading station uh, shows good performance from technical perspective. We didn't face the, any, any issues. Uh, still, the main business case uh, is uh, we are looking forward for marine operation uh, growth in Baltic Sea. And this terminal will enable LNG bunkering operations in Kleipadas port. Even now it serves as a bunkering um, station for Estonian port uh, where there is LNG carrier uh, operating between uh, Helsinki and Tallinn. Uh, our assets and uh, liabilities uh, decreased uh, year on year. And the main reason is uh, that we took a decision to pay out uh, uh, higher than usual dividends. In uh, April, we, the company paid out 100% uh, of uh, earned profit uh, of 2017, which equals to 17 million euros of uh, dividends. And that's the consequence of the changes in assets as well as uh, equity and liabilities. Uh, I think that's, uh, that's the key message uh, looking at this slide. And to look at the financial figures, I would like to highlight uh, our return on equity, 
which we are uh, focusing uh, mostly. We believe that uh, one of the key indicators representing uh, value accretion for the shareholders. So return on equity, uh, looking uh, rolling 12 months, we reached 10.3%, which is uh, two times uh, bigger than uh, comparing with the period uh, a year ago. And uh, uh, we are uh, pretty proud of uh, such results achieved. Uh, looking at uh, investments overview, uh, we believe that uh, part of our success in oil uh, transshipment uh, increase is related with investments we have done uh, so far in our terminal. Uh, we clearly see increasing demand uh, from customers for wider range of services and it helps us to anchor several key customers in Claypeda. And uh, looking at uh, this year, uh, we have uh, pretty ambitious uh, investment plans into our oil terminal plant. Uh, if uh, financial results don't show it, uh, we we had uh, invested uh, actually only 6.3 million euros, but overall annual plan is around 30 million euros and uh, it will soon um, uh, start uh, increasing because we have uh, construction, uh, pretty active construction works in our on our site, and uh, we will have to cover the bills for those works which you see in our pictures. And now we are uh, pretty actively developing additional tanks uh, in our terminal, uh, which will have uh, uh, not only opportunity to accumulate higher volumes of oil products for our customers but as well it will enable us to deal with petrochemical products in the near future uh, starting from uh, the end of 2019 the beginning of 2020. So that was my key messages and uh, thank you. I'm open for your questions. Mr. Yusuf, uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, we will now continue with questions and uh, you can still send your questions in the section on the right side of the screen. We have a question uh, that came. What are your forecasts for the Klepados Naftas oil uh, products uh, transshipment in the 2018 second half of the year? Could you please comment on that? Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you for, for this question. Uh, we would expect uh, quite comparable um, oil transshipment volumes in second half of this year. Uh, if to look at quarterly results, we see that the uh, second quarter was a little bit uh, lower in transshipment volumes compared to the first, uh, but that's quite a typical um, cycle for our business that during summertime we have a, a slightly lower demand for exporting uh, of the products. There is higher demand on land and uh, looking at the uh, the fourth quarter, we believe that our positions are pretty strong um, compared to our rivals. Uh, we believe that we will have uh, uh, around 7.2 7 million tons of oil products transshipped uh, through our terminals during uh, 2018. Thank you for your answer. The second question is the following. Are there any news about participation in the Croatia terminal? Um, thank you. Uh, we've touched the um, additional business line that uh, I didn't mention during today's presentation. Uh, so our activities in developing uh, terminals all over the world and Croatia was one of uh, the, the projects that was uh, 
already known for for the public to some extent uh, unfortunately i uh, don't have a very good news in terms of croatia's uh, project it's turned out uh, that there is uh, a need uh, uh, and plan for stronger government support in this project and the government uh, in uh, such situation is pretty uh, uh, is being uh, is looking at uh, foreign investors with uh, with some reserve so um, our activities are a little bit postponed uh, in Croatia we managed to generate uh, close to half a million uh, euros of uh, revenues from uh, consul consultations already in this project but our ambition was definitely to become uh, an equity owner in uh, in this project uh, company so we still have to look uh, we are following very closely how this project will develop further on but we managed to compensate croatia with uh, other two potential projects in our short uh, shortlist pipeline and um, we still have a goal during this year to to reach at least uh, with one of the projects uh, FID which is final investment decision and I hope to come with some more concrete uh, news during uh, the second half of this year thank you uh, there is one more question you mentioned that uh, oil transit business is more uh, profitable compared to export can you elaborate what is the margin difference? Um, unfortunately, I can't go further deeper with uh, comparing those two business segments due to uh, com just um, obligation to keep uh, commercial secrets uh, with our customers. But uh, in general, uh, the range of uh, services is pretty different and uh, pricing on on specific products also variate so i can't say specifically that uh, only trans transit uh, products uh, are having better margins but in general the range of the services that we provide for transit uh, customers uh, helps us to to uh, have a better profitability Thank you. Um, could you please comment what is uh, the progress on the long-term solution regarding independence? What is the current timeline? Um, yes, currently uh, we have a lease agreement uh, with Hyok LNG until 2024 and we were asked uh, by the government of Lithuania to investigate uh, all possible options and to come with a recommendation uh, what, uh, what is the best option for the country after 2024. And uh, to help us with this exercise, we also employed uh, independent consultant uh, company Poiri Management uh, to help us to to, to forecast uh, the market developments and uh, other uh, market factors. So to sum up, uh, we are pretty close with uh, coming with the recommendation for the government, and uh, it is uh, stated also in independent uh, study that uh, there is a need. Uh, for LNG terminal in Lithuania, for large-scale LNG terminal in Lithuania after 2024. So uh, during uh, the next uh, quarter, we will come out with uh, specific uh, news and options uh, how we recommend to proceed for the government of Lithuania. Thank you. Uh, how do you estimate progress on investment plans of the company? Is it in line with the schedule? At the moment, uh, one of the majors, major 
investment program is a second uh, phase of oil terminal development and it goes in line with the time plan as well as uh, with the budget and the other investments uh, that we are planning um, related with uh, global LNG projects and here we we would be very happy to see um, investments coming in, in in two three years period of time okay thank you in case you decide to acquire the lng terminal what is the potential timeline of the deal uh, if the question is regards uh, Lithuanian LNG terminal acquisition. And then uh, we have an, uh, an option in our lease agreement with Hawk LNG to implement uh, buyout uh, of, of the terminal in 2004, 2024. So this is one of the options um, we we are considering uh, from among other alter alternatives. Thank you. And does Klipados Nafta plan to increase the amount of sales to Polish customers through the LNG reloading terminal? Uh, yes, today I think uh, already majority of uh, trucks uh, left clip at the LNG reloading station to Poland, to Polish market. Uh, at the moment, uh, we have to acknowledge that we face very tough competition against uh, Russian liquefaction um, facilities located in Kaliningrad's uh, area as well as in Pskov. And uh, the main um, reason is that uh, gas uh, molecules or LNG molecules prices are significantly lower than global LNG, uh, even if uh, the prices for our terminal infrastructure are pretty comparable. So this is um, one of the biggest uh, challenges that we face. Uh, that is also Limiting, limiting us at the moment from uh, much higher volumes and uh, delivery of LNG to to Polish uh, market. Uh, even though I'm pretty looking uh, positive uh, towards developments in Poland, there are uh, more than 200 uh, of MOU signed with different uh, municipalities in uh, eastern and uh, eastern part of, of Poland, which is pretty close to our terminal and geographically we have uh, competitive advantages. And uh, if even now LNG from Russian terminals uh, comes at a significantly lower price uh, to and captures the market in Poland, I believe this enables or helps the market to develop faster which means that demand is growing and uh, that's a good opportunity still for the future for us to take uh, back our market share. Thank you very much. Uh, how do the company results look like in the contest uh, of uh, company strategic and annual goals? Uh, we had uh, four strategic annual uh, goals, business goals. Uh, so our financial results are performing very well, but in terms of um, other key goals, they are following. Um, investment program into Klaipeda's oil terminal. Uh, we are very happy with uh, the progress of, of investments. They are in line with the time plan and the budget. So this goal is uh, in line with our expectations. The second uh, goal and the most important goal was uh, development of global LNG terminals. 
and uh, here we have uh, two KPIs. One was uh, to reach at least one FID and to to find uh, additional two uh, projects into our short um, short uh, short list. Uh, so in that sense, we are having two potential projects uh, that might reach FID and uh, additional couple of projects in our shortlist. So this goal has not reached yet, but uh, I believe um, everything is still doable and in our hands. We also had uh, uh, the goal for reloading station to reach uh, um, volumes of uh, transshipments and this um, goal is partially achieved. Uh, we are below our target by something like uh, 25 maybe 30 percent uh, measuring in uh, revenues and uh, the fourth uh, target uh, that the company has set is related with uh, analysis for for long-term LNG supply in Lithuania and uh, this these activities are absolutely in line with our expectations Thank you for the answers. It looks uh, like we've covered all of our questions so far. We are still waiting for more questions to come in. If you have not sent uh, them, uh, please do so now. Okay, it looks like there are no more questions. On behalf of Nasdaq Vilnius, thank you everyone. It was a pleasure being with you at traditional webinar session. The record of the presentation will be available in the Nasdaq Baltic YouTube channel webinar playlist. Mr. Yusus, thank you for your time. Participants, thank you for joining and hope to see you next time. Thank you, bye-bye.